Um, you admitted yourself that the war in Iraq was planned only two days after 9-11 based on a gut feeling. Now, do you think that this was perhaps a mistake? And if you could do it again, would you have, would you have advised differently? Well, I, I don't know where you I never said that, I don't believe. But let me, um, and by, there are two different phases here. I was very disturbed after 9-11 in the immediate aftermath by several facts. And fact number one, and let me just stop with that. And I'm amazed at how few people seem to even know this. I mean, even people who were in my administration at the time. There was only one leader in the world who did not condemn the attacks of 9-11. Even Mullah Omar, the leader of the Taliban, said it was what happened was terrible, but you have no proof that al-Qaeda did it. The only leader who didn't condemn it was Saddam Hussein. He did more than not condemn it. He actually said more or less these words, after what the US has done to other countries, and he talked at length about what the sanctions had done to Iraq, specifically. Until Americans suffer the way they've made other people suffer, its government will never get the right policy. To me, that and many other things, including the fact that the only person still at large who had been responsible for the first World Trade Center bombing, a man named Abdul Rahman Yassin, was in Baghdad. <coughs> they claim that he was under house arrest. At any rate, the Iraqis had him. Uh, they'd had him for 10 years, since 1993. Uh, that, to me, was another ominous fact. And I wasn't saying we should go to Baghdad. And that, by the way, this was planned much later, not by me. But I did feel that this was part of the problem and that Saddam could and should have been confronted earlier, not at the expense of confronting the Taliban and confronting al-Qaeda, but to say, among other things, hand over Abdul Rahman Yassin, hand over Abu Nidal, another global terrorist that was harbored in Baghdad, hand over Abu Abbas, another global <laughs> terrorist. We could have, the real point is Saddam was dangerous. I think he proved that he was dangerous earlier. He was proving that he was dangerous then. Whether a more limited military action might have been successful, which is actually what I argued for, uh, we can debate endlessly. I think one thing, though, to me, I would say two things. The war that followed in 2003 was longer and more costly than I think anyone predicted. And that, there, you can look for different reasons for that, but I think most of all it's because Al-Qaeda decided to make a fight in Iraq and because we took so long to figure out how to have a counterinsurgency strategy. Um, and that, I think war, Churchill said, war is a series of blunders. I mean, blunders in war are common and they're also costly. But I can't imagine how much, I can't imagine. I think it would be terrible today if Saddam Hussein or his son Uday or Kuse, who were even more terrible than he was, was still in power in Baghdad. Terrible not only for the Iraqis who suffered for so long and so much under that dictatorship. This is a man who started a war against Iran that killed a million people, a third of them Iraqis. Started another war against Kuwait that killed, in the end, I think over 200,000 Iraqi soldiers. Our, executed tens of thousands of political opponents, political prisoners. It was a monstrous place, and there was no possibility it was going to change. And I think if we had Saddam or one of his sons in power in Iraq today, we'd be seeing a much worse world. But it, it has been painful. There's no question about that.